Greetings, greetings, great levens. Welcome to Educate. Today we'll be doing the mechanism of breathing and a gaseous exchange. It is my recommendation that you watch our previous video because uh, it explains and introduces the gaseous exchange topic as well as the structure of the respiratory system. I'll make sure that I leave the link in the description. So now, uh, breathing, I'm sure we all know what breathing is. It is actually the that process that you you are doing right now because nobody cannot live without breathing right so breathing is just that uh, mechanical process whereby you inhale and exhale so you need remember that your body needs oxygen it's a gas that is found in the air so your body needs oxygen so that it can do what it can uh, do all sorts of functions so that the cells can do cellular respiration and so that you can live okay so for you to be able to live, you need oxygen. So for you to get that oxygen, you need to inhale air and you need to exhale air. Hence, we say that uh, the process of breathing is a mechanical process. So when something is mechanical, it means that it involves the movement of something. Just that, that, that is just the basic way of seeing things. So if we say breathing is a mechanical process, it means it involves movement of muscles. So there are certain muscles that move when you breathe, hence we say it's a mechanical process. When you say something is a chemical process, it involves chemical reactions, right? So for mechanical processes, it involves the movement of something. So there are two processes under breathing. We have got inhaling as well as exhaling, whereby inhaling is breathing in the air and exhaling is breathing out the air. So now uh, there are a couple of muscles which we'll be discussing, which are uh, which are involved during the process of breathing so uh when you're inhaling uh there are certain things that happens to those muscles because we've said that it's a mechanical process it means that they move in some way so you need to know i remember that in our previous videos we've said that we've got three breathing muscles which are the ribs the intercostal muscles as well as the diaphragm so those are the three muscles that are involved in breathing so we need to know what happens to those muscles when you are breathing in air or when you're inhaling or uh, when you're exhaling what happens to those muscles so you, you need just to know that when you're, whenever you're answering questions about the inhaling process you need to just mention what happened to the breathing muscles as well as what happens to the air pressure so now let us try to break it down so um, during breathing when you're inhaling specifically when you're taking some air in you can see that in this diagram here there's an arrow that is uh, representing that air is coming inside your nose right so as you are inhaling the air what actually happens to the breathing muscles first let us talk about the ribs so when we combine all the ribs we say that it is called the rib cage so the rib cage is actually this, the, the, this whole structure, all these bones that you are seeing around here, all of these bones, these are called, this is called the rib cage. Like, it's a combination of ribs, right? So we call it the rib cage. So when you are breathing in, the rib cage lifts upwards and pushes outwards. Okay, so when you are breathing in, your rib cage, all these bones will actually lift upwards, meaning that they actually go up and then they push outwards and they also do what? They also go outwards. That is why when whenever you tie you whenever you touch your chest and then you breathe in, what will happen? Your chest will become bigger. So it is actually the rib cage that is moving upwards and outwards. So the rib cage, these bones here, these bones here, these ribs, they actually move upwards and then they push outwards. And the other inter uh, the other breathing muscle that we have. It is called the intercostal muscles. So the intercostal muscles, remember, there are those muscles that are found in between the ribs, right? So you can see that here from this label, intercostal muscles are between two ribs. This is a rib. This is a rib. Let me actually use a highlighter. So using a highlighter, we say that this is a rib. All of this part is a rib. This is a rib. This is another rib. All these which I'm painting with yellow, they are ribs. And they are forming the a rib cage right i'm sure you've learned that in grade 10 so between the ribs there are muscles that are found and we call them the intercostal muscles so in some static guys they can tell you that they are exterior intercostal muscles but then you can just refer to them as intercostal muscles so intercostal muscles are found in between the ribs so during inhaling the intercostal muscles will contract so when you say that muscles are contracting it means that they are tightening up
so when something is being more tight or when something is being more tense or you can say more tight it means that it is contracting so intercostal muscles become more tight whenever you breathe in and then now the other muscle that we have that is involved in breathing it is the diaphragm so the diaphragm remember it is just found below the lungs this is the diaphragm here so this is the diaphragm you can see the lungs are the ones that are in purple right and then the rib cage it is those bones that are covering the lungs for protection and then the diaphragm is, is this pink this i'm sure you can see this this label showing this pink muscles just below the lungs we call that a diaphragm so the diaphragm during breathing in or during inhaling the diaphragm contracts so it means that it tightens also just like the intercostal muscles so when you say that it contracts it means it means it becomes tighter and then it moves downwards so you can see that here there's an arrow here there's an arrow here so this arrow here um let me use this black pen so this arrow here is just trying to uh, tell you the movement of the diaphragm during inhaling so whenever you are inhaling the diaphragm will push downwards it will move downwards it actually does the opposite compared to the rib cage remember the rib cage moves upwards and pushes outwards right but the diaphragm instead does the opposite it contracts meaning that it tightens and then it does what it moves downwards so uh, that that is what happens to the breathing muscles so remember that we've got three breathing muscles the ribs the intercostal muscles as well as the diaphragm so what happens to them during inhalation or during inhaling the rib cage will lift upward and push it push outwards yeah like push outwards as in like your chest will become like it will expand because the rib cage is pushing out whereas the intercostal muscles which are the muscles found between the ribs they actually do what they contract and the diaphragm will contract and will do what will also move downwards so in some static guides you need to know that they can say that the diaphragm will flatten so flattening and contracting in this context means the very same thing then now looking at air pressure remember air pressure we're just looking at mostly the amount of air that is in a certain area right so pressure we just want to see how much air is 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 in certain places during breath during inhalation or during inhaling whenever you breathe in some air so we first start with the atmospheric pressure so what do we say about this um we say that uh, the atmospheric pressure is greater than the pressure in the lungs so whenever you are inhaling some air your lungs do not have so much air right that is why air has to move from the from the atmosphere here from the outward so that it can get inside your lungs so the atmospheric pressure meaning that the amount of air outside is greater than the amount of air inside your lungs that is what causes the air to move from outside to inside the lungs during inhalation and then another thing about air pressure is that air pressure in the lungs decrease as the chest air expands so the chest expands always when we are inhaling right so as the chest is expanding or as we are inhaling the air pressure in the lungs decrease the air pressure in the lungs decrease so as you are taking in more air inside inside your lungs there will be what there will be less air pressure okay so uh breathing in or uh inhaling it's an active process so when i'm saying that a process in, is active it means that it requires a lot of energy we have got two types of processes we have got an active process or a passive process in life sciences so whenever they say active process it means it requires more energy to happen whereas a passive process requires less energy to occur so in this case breathing in or inhalation no um inhaling is an active process meaning that uh, it requires more energy for you to lift all these muscles and whatnot you require a lot of energy that's why you feel sometimes whenever you are having trouble breathing it is because you're having trouble breathing in but then when you're breathing out it becomes a bit easier right so we're just going to take the very same characteristics and put them in the inhaling part and the exhaling part i mean so whenever you are exhaling it means that the air is moving out from your lungs and then it is going 
uh, it is going to, to the outside environment. You are breathing the air out, right? So the breathing muscles, we're still going to talk about the breathing muscles as well as the air pressure. So the breathing muscles, starting with the rib cage, in this case, it moves down and it moves inwards. So whenever you exhale, whenever you breathe out some air, your chest will be a bit smaller, right? It will be smaller. You can see that here, this dotted line here in this diagram, there's a dotted line which I'm highlighting here. So this dotted line is actually showing you how, the ch how big the chest was before you started exhaling the air. And when the moment you start exhaling the air, the chest becomes smaller because the rib cage is moving downwards and it is moving inwards, right? It is moving downwards and inwards, causing your chest to do what? Your chest to, to become smaller or yes, the opposite of expansion, right? Whereas the intercostal muscles are the ones that are between the ribs, they relax in this case. In this case, they do not tighten, they do what? They relax. And another muscle, which is the diaphragm, it just does the opposite, it relaxes. In the first uh, process, the inhaling process, it was contracting, and in this process, it relaxes, and then it moves upwards. So it actually does the opposite of the rib cage. So if you're having trouble understanding this, I recommend that you can just try to understand the one of the rib cage and do the opposite with the diaphragm, because when the rib cage moves down, the diaphragm actually moves up and when the rib cage moves up the diaphragm moves down so they actually do the opposite of each other right so you can see here in this case they say diaphragm relaxes and moves upwards you can see that the arrow here that they are using to represent the diaphragm the diaphragm is showing that it is moving up whenever you are exhaling then talking about the air pressure as well the atmospheric pressure is less than the pressure in the lungs, hence the air will be forced out. So we talk of atmospheric pressure. The pressure outside, the pressure of the air outside here, it is less now than the pressure inside the lungs. Remember that your, before you exhale, your lungs are filled with a lot of air. So there's a lot of air inside your lungs. So there's more air pressure inside your, lung, in, inside your lungs, I mean, um, than the air pressure outside. So the air has to move from the lungs to the outside lungs. And another process, uh, another thing about air pressure is that the air pressure inside the lungs increase as the chest reduces. So as your chest is, uh, is, is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller, the air pressure in the lungs will increase because the air is being forced out. Remember that the air is being forced out, so it will move out with a lot of pressure. So the air pressure in lungs will increase as you are breathing out. And then exhaling is a passive process. We say it's passive because it does not require a lot of energy. You say, yes, it's passive. It does not require a lot of energy to okay. And then now, I hope you understand. Then now, let us look at the composition of the air that we breathe in. So let us uh, first um, understand that there is a difference between air and oxygen for those who may be confused and uh, might be thinking the same thing. There is a difference between air and oxygen. Okay, so when I talking about air, we are talking about the gas that we are breathing in. We breathe in some air. We don't breathe in oxygen as such, but we breathe in some air. So that air is the one that will contain what? Will contain oxygen. So in this case, uh, what is inside the air that we breathe in and we breathe out? So let us try to look that up. So when you are breathing in, uh, we've got certain, uh, certain components of air where we've got certain gases that are found in the air that you breathe in, right? So what are those gases? First, we've got nitrogen. Nitrogen constitutes up to 78% of the air that we breathe in. So it means that whenever you are inhaling some air, you, it contains 78% of, of, of nitrogen. So nitrogen is a lot inside the air that we breathe in. And then it contains oxygen, which is 21%, as well as carbon dioxide, which is 0,04%. So whenever you are inhaling air, you inhale 78% of nitrogen, you inhale 21% of oxygen, and you inhale 0,04% of carbon dioxide. So that is what is found inside our air. This is making up the air that we breathe in each and every time. Right. So now when you're exhaling, 
what will be the difference? Because remember that uh, we, here we're talking about the air that is coming inside you. You are breathing it in. It contains 78 of nitrogen, 21% of oxygen, 0 0.04 of carbon dioxide. What about the air that you are exhaling or the air that you are breathing out? The air that is coming away from your lungs, that, that is moving away from your lungs. What does it have? How much? How much? How many things does it have? It still has got nitrogen as well. And uh, the nitrogen constitutes 78% still. So do you actually see that we inhale 78% of nitrogen, but we still exhale 78% of nitrogen. This means that the nitrogen is not used inside our body. It is just getting inside and it moves outside. Otherwise, it is not doing anything to our body. But check this. The oxygen that we inhale, we inhale 21% of oxygen, but we exhale 16% of it. What does this mean? It means that some of the oxygen that we inhale has been used up by our body to do certain process, like cellular respiration, okay? Uh, yes, like oxygenating the blood and whatnot. But the oxygen that we breathe in, when we're exhaling now, we'll exhale less than the oxygen that we inhaled, right? And then now the carbon dioxide increases, the carbon dioxide increases from 0.04% to 4%. So whenever you are exhaling, whenever you're exhaling carbon dioxide, you exhale more of it. Okay? So carbon dioxide, remember that it is always um what we it is always found in what we breathe out, right? So you can see that we only inhaled 0.04% of carbon dioxide. Hence, uh, but, but I mean but we exhaled 4% of it. So do you actually see that here? 